Hello dear students, this is Dr. Govind Saraswat, Assistant Professor in English from Government College Dekana. Dear students, in this lecture today, we are going to discuss some figures of speech which are prescribed for the syllabus of undergraduate students. Although the list of figures of speech is very lengthy, but today we will discuss only those basic ones which a student of English literature need to know. Before we uh, discuss them one by one, first of all, we should know what a figure of a speech is. A figure of a speech is a poetic device which consists in the use of words and phrases in such a manner as to make the meaning more pointed and clear and the language more graphic and vivid. These figures of a speech are also called images, for in them, one thing is represented in the image of another. Now, let's discuss these figures of speech one by one. The first one is simile. The word simile comes from the Latin word similes, which means likeness. In, a fi in this figure of a speech, generally two different objects or events are placed side by side and are compared, finding some common quality in them. And this comparison is done by using the word like like or as. For example, if someone says that Ram is as brave as lion, so Ram different hai, lion different hai, lekin like word use karke, koi common quality jo dono ke beech mein shayad ho sakta hai, bravery ho sakti ya fir ba, bold hai, jaise maan lo, to usi hisaab se unko compare kiya gaya hai. There are many examples of simile in English literature. Next one is metaphor. A metaphor is implied simile. Literally, it means a carrying over. There is a difference between simile and metaphor. Because in simile, two different things are compared, whereas in metaphor, they are identified. For example, a very famous, let us discuss a very famous poem by Robert Burns. The first line of that poem is, Oh, my love is like a red rose. So, this line is, a, is an example of Simile because Robert Burns is comparing his lady love with a red rose because he has used word like lady love alag hai, rose alag hai. Like in word like se compare kiya hai. The next line is she is actually a red rose. So in this second line we can say Robert Burns is using metaphor because he is not comparing his lady love with a red rose. Rather he is identifying his lady love with red rose. Metaphor may like or as word ka use nahi hota hai. So this is all about simile and metaphor. Next figure of speech is personification. Personification is a special kind of metaphor because in this figure of speech, a poet speaks of or addresses lifeless objects or abstract ideas as if they are human beings. For example, a very famous ode by P.B. Shelley personifies various lifeless objects. In the very beginning, P.B. Shelley personifies west wind, then sun, he personifies sun and uh, autumn season, then even Mediterranean sea. So this is an example of personification because he talks about these lifeless objects or abstract ideas as if they are living. A special kind of personification is also known as apostrophe when the poet directly addresses these uh, lifeless objects or abstract ideas that is what we mean by apostrophe. For example, when he says O wild west wind. So the use of word O, O-H, it suggests that the poet is directly addressing west wind. So this is an example of apostrophe. Next figure of a speech is pathetic fallacy. A pathetic fallacy is a figure of a speech in which human emotions are given to lifeless objects and abstract ideas. It is a special kind of personification because these lifeless or abstract ideas are made to partake of human emotions. For example, when someone says that all nature wept at his death and the flowers were filled with tears. So, nature or flowers who lifeless objects hain 
बट इवन देन पॉइट ने उनको ह्यूमन इमोशंस दी है जैसे वो बिको ऐसा लग रहा है जैसे दे आर दे आर ग्रीफ स्ट्राइकन एंड दे आर एक्सप्रेसिंग देर ग्रीफ और द डिवाइस ऑफ सम वेरी नियर और डियर टू दैम नेक्स्ट फिगर ऑफ स्पीच इज एंटिस एंटिस मीन्स प्लेसिंग वन वर्ड और आइडिया अगेंस्ट अनदर एंड द इंटेंशन ऑफ द पॉइट इज टू हाईलाइट द इफेक्ट ऑफ वॉट इज सेड बाई कॉन्ट्रास्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल स्पीच इज सिल्वरी साइलेंस इज गोल्ड सो वन आइडिया इज सेट अगेंस्ट द अनदर वन एंड द कॉन्ट्रास्ट क्रिएट्स द इफेक्ट वॉट द पॉइट इंटेंस टू गिव टू द रीडर्स वन मोर एग्जाम्पल इज मैरिज हैज मैनी पेंस बट सेलेबस गिव्स नो प्लेजर सो द कॉन्ट्रास्ट बिटवीन दीज टू स्टेटमेंट्स क्रिएट एन एंटीथेटिकल इफेक्ट वन मोर एग्जाम वन मोर फिगर ऑफ स्पीच इज ऑक्जीमोरॉन ऑक्जीमोरॉन लाई ऑक्जीमोरॉन इज ए फिगर ऑफ स्पीच इन विच टू अपोजिट वर्ड्स आर प्लेस्ड साइड बाई साइड they are opposite in meaning but even then uh, when the poet places them side by side they create a more striking effect when, for example when someone says that life is a pleasing pain so uh, painful bhi hai pleasing bhi hai this is all about life so when someone says that uh, he is the wisest fool so the use of wisest and fool side by side creates the Uh, effect of this speaker of a speech called oxymoron next speaker of a speech in this list is hyperbole hyperbole is uh, an exaggeration literally it means a throwing beyond because generally uh, the poet represents things as much greater or smaller than they really are and the intention of the poet is to produce a more striking effect than the plain statement can for example agar koi ye keh de ke hazar bar keh diya to koi count karne ke liye to baitha nahi hai but even then emphasize karke agar ye kehte hain koi ke hazar bar keh diya so this is an example of hyperbole uh next is pun uh when we use the same word in two or more senses in order to make the people laugh we employ the figure of a speech called pun for example when someone says that an exam an ambassador is a gentleman who lies abroad for the good of his country so the use of pun is uh in the use of word lies because lies ke do matlab nikalte hain ek to rehna bhi hai aur jhoot bolna bhi hota hai so the use of a single word lies which suggest more more than one meaning this is an example of pun next figure of a speech is irony in this figure of a speech uh generally the um, let us uh, ex- uh, let us uh, be more simple irony arises out of contrast the contrast between appearance and reality so uh, when someone says uh when someone quotes the example of uh, and marcus antony in julius caesar when he uses the word honorable for brutus then we know very well that the use of word the word honorable is ironical because he has deliberately used the word honorable so for the people it may be honorable but really it is not so uh the real meaning is just the opposite of that which is literally conveyed by the language used creates ironical statements then there is one more figure of a speech called transferred epithet in this figure of a speech uh, actually an adjective is transferred and is it is applied with another noun for example when someone uh, when someone uh, reads the line the plowman homeward plods his weary way so the use of the word weary creates uh the effect that how can the way be weary because it may be the uh, it may be the plowman who is weary but the word weary is transferred from plowman and it is applied with way 
so this is an example of transferred epithet so we have discussed the basic figures of a speech i hope that this lecture would be very useful for you we will discuss some more things in the upcoming lectures thank you